Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now today we are going to talk about Starlink. I originally got Starlink in May 2021 where I started testing it and it was just set in a non-fixed location in, in my backyard. I also took it on a couple of uh, trips to see where it could be used and how far it could be used outside of your home and uh, found out that you have about 25 to 30 kilometers around your home that you can actually drive it and use it. So we're still waiting on that really mobile version uh, of Starlink so you can take it on vacation with you and get your own Starlink connection wherever you go, even at the top of a mountain, as long as you have power, of course. Now, I've been using it consistently since uh, the, the summer. So July, I installed it on my garden shed. And uh, since then, I've been using it now for six months. And initially, I got really, really good results with download speeds of 300 megabits per second and upload speeds of 40 to 50, sometimes even 60 megabits per second. Now, this was better than what I got from my local ISP because my local ISP um, gives me upload speeds of maximum 50 megabits per second. Now, I do pay for gigabit speeds uh, download, which result into 850 to 950 megabits per second down. Uh, so that, of course, is a big difference, but I do pay additional for that. Now, I come back to the cost at the end of this video. But more importantly, what has my experience been over these past six months? What I noticed is that once the summer was over, like the end of August, uh, the numbers started declining really rapidly. They fell down to 150 to 200 megabits, sometimes even below 100 megabits per second uh, in terms of download speeds. The upload speeds were horrible at 7, 8, 9 megabits per second. Now, I reached out to um, SpaceX or Starlink and they were very helpful. They did check my installation remotely which is awesome that they can do that of course um and they told me like yeah you're you're actually one of the better performing in the area at the moment so there must have been something going on at that point maybe in the configuration maybe they needed to change something in in the background because as of september of course it got out of beta and then a lot of new users uh, in my area were added. Maybe that is why the numbers were so low all of a sudden. But I have to say that in the past month or so, it has stabilized again. So now I am still getting occasion speeds of between 150 and 300 megabits per second, while officially they are still only advertising 50 to 150. So you're getting more than what you pay for in, in, in theory. Um, but it's the download speeds that are still stuck between 10 to 15, sometimes 16, 17. Um, that's about the maximum that I get on average. Now, there are some uh, outliers uh, where I tested it yesterday in the span of about five minutes. Uh, I did different speed tests, made sure that this was the only computer that was attached or was uploading stuff. And then you see the uploads varying from below 10 megabits per second to upwards of 50 megabits per second. Uh, but in general, it's about 10 to 15. And that is what is causing a problem for me personally. Because for me, the upload speed is important because I do live streams. And of course, when I upload my videos like this one to YouTube, then slower upload speeds means that it takes a lot longer to get the video uploaded, of course. Now, the really positive thing is that I have had zero complaints about outages. There were some outages uh, that were reported. If you look at the app, for example, you can see that there was a 30 second outage or a seven second outage, but I've never noticed it while I'm working with it. Of course, the question is, how do I use Starlink? I use uh, Starlink mainly and only actually for my studio at the moment, where I use it for all my video calls, both privately and personally. I use this studio for all my video conferences. 
that I'm doing, the video calls that I'm doing. It's uh, either using Teams, Zoom, or of course, uh, doing the live streams that I am sometimes doing on my channel. Now, for the live streams, I do check beforehand what the upload speed is. If I see an upload speed that is around 10 or below 10, then I will switch to my uh, local ISP, which has the guaranteed 40 to 50 megabits per second upload. Um, I do this to be sure because um, live streaming requires at least 10 megabits per second. In reality, it's more like six, seven, sometimes eight with some spikes, uh, depending on how much graphics you are displaying and animations and that kind of stuff. Um, but it's around that number. So 10 is an absolute minimum to do proper live streaming. I've done it one time using Starlink where I did see the buffer getting eaten up. So in the software that I'm using, that's Ecamm Live. Um, I do see the statistics while I'm streaming and I do see the amount of buffer that is remaining and it was shrinking really rapidly and was close to getting cut out before it just um, reconnected and got back up to, to decent speeds. And uh, so far that has prevented me from using it for live streams, but I've just done a live stream conference for three days where I was live streaming. Uh, I was a participant, I was not organizing it. I was a participant in that, where I was live streaming in a Zoom conference for nine hours straight. And I didn't see any outages. I didn't see any uh, chopped up imaging uh, or anything. So it was working fine. And this has grown my confidence in using Starlink for the next live stream as well. So I can use Starlink as my sole internet connection for everything that I do in the studio. Now, why haven't I connected my entire house to it? Well, there are a couple of reasons why I haven't done it. Um, the first reason is that Starlink is fixed, set to your uh, local internet address of 192.168.1.xxx. And you cannot change that dot one that is fixed and I don't know why they do that, but historically in my house, I uh, actually did not have the one, I had another number. So that would mean that all my fixed IPs, I would have to change them in order to be able to just switch to Starling because otherwise I would be in a different IP range and I wouldn't get any internet connection at all. Now you could say, okay, that's like a small task, but I have like over 20 devices with a fixed IP in my house. So that takes a little while. Ideally, I would have some kind of firewall solution that automatically would, would switch between my local ISP and Starlink whenever my local ISP has some downtime, for example, because they are working in the street or um, even if there would be like an electrical failure, Starlink could save me if I would install an additional uh, a power supply, uh, like a UPS that would take over, kick in and just power Starlink and the studio. And that way I could still automatically jump on that network and uh, stream via that network. So that would be the ideal situation, but it's also a costly situation. I do have Starlink as a test device, Maybe I will switch to it one day when it's really stable and uh, really also providing those gigabit speeds. But right now my ISP is a lot cheaper um, and also it's a lot more stable. Another reason why I don't use Starlink at the moment is although Starlink does support most of the protocols for VPN, uh, for some reason it does not support the uh, protocol that I have, that is being used at work. So I cannot use VPN access to my work. So if I would put the entire house on it, I would not be able to work from home. And the same for my wife. She also needs VPN access for her work. And uh, probably I haven't tested it with her laptop yet, but probably it's the same issue. So if you need VPN, it's not always going to work. 
uh, with Starlink yet. I hope they will fix that soon. The next question is of course, would it work? Would it be fast enough to be able to take care of the entire house? Now, in my case, I have uh, four Nest cameras that are using, I looked it up, 1.2 megabits per second each for uploading high quality uh, security video to uh, the Nest Cloud. Um, so that's about five uh, megabits per second that it's taken up there in terms of upload. Of course, my YouTube stream would be on top of that, uh, meaning I would need at least 15 and closer to 20 with some margin um, megabits per second to be able to do all of that together. Of course, there is whatever the kids are doing, if they're watching some YouTube on their phones or playing online games, um, that is going to go mostly to the download side. So that would be fine. And of course, if we Netflix, um, they apparently give 25 megabits per second as, um, as a guide per TV that is watching or per channel, per device that is watching 4K video. Now, not all devices can do 4K. If you're watching on your computer and you don't have a 4K display or if you're watching on your phone, that's not 4K, but assume that it is all 4K, that's 100 megabits per second plus the five uh, upload um, or let's say 15 to 20 upload. So in theory, it could work. And I know people that have switched completely to Starlink, which is awesome. Uh, but for me personally, it's the upload that is killing it to do it or to do everything on, uh, on Starlink for now. But as I said, um, can it be your only internet connection? It definitely can. So with speeds of 150 to 300, not so long ago, only a few years ago, this was the standard for internet connectivity. So yeah, that is definitely more than enough. And as I said, the upload for most people, it will be more than enough to have that upload speed for emailing or maybe uploading some uh, minor videos and that kind of stuff. Uh, definitely Starlink can be your only connection. Um, the fact or the question, is it worth it? That's a different question because um, if I calculate what I pay for my local ISP, if I go for a 300 megabits per second download speed and 20 megabits per second upload speed, which is roughly what I'm getting with Starlink, then I pay 55 euros for that per month. And if I do it with Starlink, that's 99 euros per month. So it's almost double the price for the same service with a lot less reliability at the moment. It might change, the more satellites we get, the better the system will get, of course, over time. But right now, at this point in time, I think you're, if you have a local ISP that gives you more than 100 megabits per second, it is not worth getting Starlink. It is way too expensive and it is not delivering all of its promises consistently. Whereas if you're below that or you don't have internet at all, or you need to do a huge investment in getting a landline to your house, then yeah, you can get it. And yes, it is expensive, but if your local ISB doesn't deliver the same value and maybe they charge the same amount, or even if it's half of the amount and you get a better experience with Starlink, by all means do go for it. So that's my experience with Starlink internet over the past six months. It was good, went down a little bit. Now it's more stable, it's more usable. And because of attending that conference where I was sending my stream out and I was getting their stream back, of course, at the same time and didn't see any glitch, my confidence in using it as my sole internet connection for the studio has definitely grown. But again, I won't be switching my house directly entirely to Starlink because of the fact that the upload speeds are now like just doable for what I need it to be. And if I add the house and uh, the guys, the kids would start uploading stuff or doing stuff that might interfere with it. So I don't want to risk it, but I will be doing every single live stream from now on 
solely on Starlink. So there you have it. As usual, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and make sure you click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. And for now, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.